sway. 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 In the morning. In the morning. In the morning. Shake your body. Wake your fuck ass up. Cross your eyes. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's an excerpt from the movie Las Vegas, uh, which is coming out this Friday. That's mm-hmm. right. This Friday, and it's starring some of the biggest names in the business, from Michael Douglas to Robert De Niro. Um, he's in it. Kevin Klein is in it. Morgan Freeman is in it. But there's no name bigger than the character <laughs> Lonnie, who is played by the one, the only Romney Malco, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh, man. Good how to you, be here, dude. How you been, man? I'm great. I've actually been great. I'm tired, but I'm good. You know, people um, know you from movies like 40-Year-Old Virgin, Blades of Glory, Think Like a Man, Gulliver Travels. <laughs> um, but I know you because prior to making all these big crossover mainstream <laughs> movies mm-hmm. that appeal to uh, middle America, um, <laughs> I know you as an entrepreneur who was actually making a lot of money selling sex toys. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! <laughs> Damn! I thought, I thought he was gonna say rap or something, but yeah, well, well, I didn't really sell no sex toys, but no, I did start this um, internet business, uh, like. Okay, can I just start up? Okay, yeah, start up? Okay, told okay, me something let about me go lying. Let, yeah. let me give this okay. dude props okay. because I was a rapper back in the day and okay. he was one of my biggest supporters. In fact, you wrote for Bam, remember that? That's right. Right? Yeah. He wrote for Bam and yeah. he, he, we got great reviews from this brother yeah. and, and just lots of props. And the fact, da- David D did those reviews too. David D did, did as yeah, well okay, for yeah. K- KML. Yeah, for KML. Exactly. Yep, yep. And and I just got to tell you, like, um, for him to be able to be able to dig into my past good enough to know that I had an internet business that revolved around male health. <laughs> male health. <laughs> Pills too. <laughs> male health <laughs> is amazing. <laughs> nah, nah. And yeah, so that, that look, look. I don't know how many times have you ever heard a rapper say, "Hey, man, if this don't work, this all I got." Nigga, I'm back in the street. If this don't work, yeah. I'm back to busting heads. Yeah. I mean, I never want to be that guy, and mm-hmm. I never want any children in my life to be that guy. So I've always made a conscious effort to be willing to dive into new stuff. And I, 1997, I discovered the internet and did start an internet business. And it made I made more money doing that than I ever made in entertainment. And it afforded me the luxury to travel, and it just changed my life, really. So what exactly were you selling? I had a company that basically dealt with male health. So like, let's say that if a man was, no, for real, like if a man was dealing with infertility, we had herbal solutions to that. But it could be as simple as a man wanted to build, you know, build more muscle, natural solutions to building t- testosterone. Yeah. It could be anything that, if, you know, if you're an athletic male, you pretty much came to my website. So it wasn't dildos because Sway no. told me you were selling dildos. No, no, Sway. No, 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 no. no. It's, 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 like, it's like the MC Scat Cat thing where, you know, it's like, Paula, why are you telling people? I ran into Paul Abdul and I'm like, why are you telling people that I was that I'm that I'm the voice of MC Scat Cat? She's like, it's a better story. I wrote for MC Scat Cat. So whatever that cat said, I wrote. But it wasn't actually me. It was oh. a guy named Derek Light. And so it's the same thing. Like, you know, the male health thing is cool, but it don't sell like dildos. Like dildos. Yeah, he <laughs> had my attention. But, 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 yeah. but what you sold can make your song look like a dildo. Pretty much, right? <laughs> yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Exactly. Same yeah. thing, Heather. Yeah, yeah. You see the relation. Dildos I see are that. small. Yeah. Oh. Great, great integration of information right there. See how we did that? That's that's why he's genius. That's what I just, I'm brilliant. I'm Kanye West on music. <laughs> that's right. Except I mean, for on radio. That's right. You don't know about them leather jogging pants, though. Damn, leather Damn. jogging pants. Yeah, that's right. I'm trying to cop those now. Yeah, the leather jogging Pants. Well, you know, for, for the winter. For the winter? <laughs> All right, well, Romney Malco is here. I want to uh, open up the phone lines, 888-742-3345. And like he said, he started in this game as a rapper yeah. with a group called The College Boys. Yeah. And one of their biggest hits was Victim of the Ghetto. You want to talk with him, 888-742-3345. You know, Tone, it really ain't that bad. Ooh, who was the girl that was singing? Um, her name was BJ. She, I uh, believe it or not, was the uh, A and R director at MCA Records at the time. But I think MCA went down. Yeah, yeah. MCA went down. Like, yeah. like all the record companies. Uh, man, let me ask you this, man. You, you kind of stumbled into acting, right? I, I did, kind of. Yeah. Well, cool. uh, you were doing music initially for it, right? I was doing music. Uh-huh. I, I did music, and then I left and started my internet business. Yeah. And then acting came to me because John Leguizamo. The pest, you guys. You did, exactly. You, okay. He saw the MC, saw MC Scat Cat rap videos and was like, I need to do that for my movie. Mm-hmm. And you know, you know, George Stephanopoulos is, right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. well, his brother, Andrew Stephanopoulos, and I are really good friends. And Andrew Stephanopoulos called me and said, Look, 
Um, John Leguizamo wants to meet you uh, because he wants to do this kind of rap thing that he saw Paul Abdul's cat doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So John Leguizamo comes over to my house and we start hanging out. At the time, he was married to this chick called Yelba and Yelba was like, John, you hang out with a bunch of comedians. He's funnier than all of them. <laughs> really? So John was like, can you audition for my movie? I auditioned for his movie and um, they called me back six times. But it really showed that I didn't have, uh, I didn't have the experience, but they kept calling me back because there was some kind of appeal that yeah, they liked. You had the potential. I had the yeah. potential, yeah. So I didn't get the movie, but um, what was really interesting is like a year later, I'm getting all these phone calls um, and I didn't know who they were from. And it was actually from all these producers all over town saying, Wendy Kurtzman, which was the woman I auditioned for, said you were her favorite audition of all time. Wow. And so it was pilot season. I didn't even know what pilot season was, but that's basically when all the new shows are being mm-hmm. developed and people were calling me in to come into the office and do, do auditions. Romney Malco, man, you see, this is this is just a dream come true right here. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and people know you from Forty Year Old Version, Think Like a Man. You've done many movies, but this one, The Las Vegas, man, I, you, to have such a, a a batch of just mega. There's nobody bigger yeah. than Robert De Niro, Morgan Freeman, you know, Kevin Klein, you yeah. know, uh, Michael Douglas. Yeah, yeah. You, oh the man, fuck? the conversation. I mean, it, 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 what, what was it like, like when the cameras weren't rolling did they communicate did they even look at you mad <laughs> jokes yeah. oh, okay so Dude, mad yeah. jokes mad jokes like i got video of all of us okay i don't know if this is gonna make any sense to anybody but like i got video of all of us watching a video of me blowing a shofar because my stepfather was jewish uh-huh so my um mom you know she bought me a shofar for my birthday i don't know what that is i, I yeah i figured it wasn't gonna make sense <laughs> yeah. it's basically it's 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 a. Uh, <laughs> It, it's a, a a ram's horn. Oh, and they use it. To, they blow it. The, the Jewish use it to blow it um, to sound off uh, for new for for the beginning of ceremonies uh-huh. and stuff like that. And so Michael Douglas saw that and just couldn't help but laugh. You know, to see me blowing one of those, and um, we all gathered around and I got video of us watching it. But it was these dudes was so grounded. I showed up on set. They was like, "Yo, you work with Mary Louise Parker, huh?" They was like, "Yo, Jerry, what's it like to be on Entourage? Yo, Forty Year Old Virgin, still a class." You know, yeah. they were like all fans. They remembered movies that I did that I forgot that I had done. Really? And just to be quite frank, I don't know how how arrogant this sounds, but you know, it's like I've gotten to work with generations of greats. So I feel like I work with Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, um, oh, Will Ferrell. He's, he's starting. Keep going. Keep and going. Then, name it off. Yeah, did, did I drop something? Yeah, go ahead. Keep oh, going. Three names. Let me get them. <laughs> okay, go ahead. No, nah, but Mike Myers. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna leave it alone. Okay. Stop. <laughs> but no, but like, and that's like, and these are these are kind of different generations. You know what I mean? Mike Myers represented an era. Yeah. You know, Amy Poehler, Tina Fey, and, and Will Ferrell have kind of been like the new era. Um, and to have be able to work with these dudes on top of that, I kind of feel like, you know, if I if there was a good time to retire. Yeah, you know. yeah, they'll be right now, right? <laughs> you know exactly. Uh, did you pick up any? Like, I, I always wondered, like, when you watch uh, athletes who are like the Floyd Mayweather's, you know, you can't get better than that in boxing. So, if I was a boxer, I would kind of want to watch the way he practices. You know, the way he develops his technique, what he does, the way he moves. We used to watch people who ran track, the fast guys. We kind of did our drills like they did the yes, drills. Yes. Mm-hmm. Is there anything you learned on the set with any of these greats, Morgan Freeman, Michael Douglas, Kevin Klein, or Robert De Niro? Like, did I, you? I learned a lot, man. I, I I remember the first scene that I did with them where I had to walk them into this, uh, introduce them, and say, "Here's your suite that you're going to be staying in." And I had it was the first time I had made eye contact with them, and I turned around and I looked at uh, Robert De Niro, and just for a millisecond, like a glitch in my head, I was like, "Are we rolling or not?" Because he looks so natural. Yeah. The director goes cut, and I'm like, I'm not. I didn't even do my my monologue. And he goes, "You letting Bobby throw you? Do not let him throw you." It was true. You saw in that moment why he was Robert De Niro because he was so natural. And what I noticed, especially with Kevin Klein, is that just because the director said cut, they didn't stop acting. They kept looking for creative ways. I took that technique wow. right there to Think Like a Man too. I literally left that set mm-hmm. and went to Think Like a Man too, and did exactly that. No matter when the camera was rolling or not, I was constantly in character, constantly looking for stuff, not just for me to do, but for Kevin to do, for Michael to do, for Terrence to do, just kept feeding the project, you know? So what happens is as an actor, a lot of times you look back at stuff and go, oh, I should have done this, I should have done that. This kind of alleviates that right there because you're constantly in creative mode. Wow, that's a special edition of Celebrity Wire. Tracy G, you had a question? Yeah, because the movie industry, it always looks very competitive. So I'm wondering, do you have a peer that acts like your confidant as well? Like who are you closest to? Man, um, you know, it, it's this. That's an interesting question because, uh, for real, for real, 
I tell you, like Cedric told me, Cedric and Tatane told me, he mm. said, man, we saw you, we, we didn't know where you came from. Mm. Uh, so who's your clique? <laughs> 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 right. And I, um, I just never really, you know, <laughs> it, my acting career is like a meta, is, is very parallel to my life. Mm -hmm. Being West Indian and born in, and born in Brooklyn, you know, I was never, when I went to school in Trinidad, I was never Trinidadian enough. Right. And when I went to school in America, I was never black enough and a damn show ain't white. So mm -hmm. I've always kind of been like very, very much alone, a solo kind of dude. Mm -hmm. And my clique usually consists of like nomads and really eclectic people. I'm attracted to people with big lives who've lived a, and traveled a lot. Mm -hmm. Because I kind of lived this very similar life. And so in acting, it's kind of the same thing where I don't necessarily have one particular clique or one particular peer, but I do have people I could reference and say, hey, Judd, I can call Judd and be like, look, this is the situation. And he'll tell you straight up, be like, look, do yourself a favor, avoid that project because it'll put you back in the rat race or, you know, that kind of thing. Judd as an Apatow? Judd Apatow, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm just, just done right. it again. All right. I didn't want to say it, but no, no, oh no, I, no, I'm not, no. <laughs> oh but but not just him, no. Yeah. I, can, I can call Kevin, who is... Y'all just know. Kevin I mean, Hart? As Kevin, in Hart? Yeah. Oh, my That's, God. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, never mind. I'm going to stop. <laughs> Three's the charm, y'all. <laughs> it's Sway in the morning. Only on Shea 45.